All right, we're back. I think we're going to start by just chilling and watching a video. Humans have existed for... All right. Oh, that is that is a blank screen. Hold on a second. Humans have existed for millions of years as part of nature. But then something changed, and in an incredibly short amount of time, we terraformed this planet and designed it to fit our needs. True. As far as we know, we're the first beings to awaken and completely take over a planet. The transition from hunting and gathering to farming and building was so breathtakingly fast that many of our ways of thinking about the world are no longer useful. One of our most outdated ideas I have no the idea what I'm doing. calendar in the world insists that we live in the year 2016. This distorts our view of our own history and makes it harder to understand who we are as a species and just how far we've come in an incredibly short amount of time. So maybe it's time to choose a year zero for humanity. A year zero that truly represents us as a species and includes all cultures. A year zero that marks when we began building our own world on top of the old one. Did we ever really build it on top of the old one, though, or did the old one build us and build ago, it? Hundreds of humans came like together. If the in old the hills one built us, then isn't it the old one they building itself? They were hunters itself? and gatherers without knowledge of agriculture or metalworking. All they had were tools made of stone and wood. But they built humanity's first big construction project, 7,000 years before the pyramids were built in Egypt. Spread over 300 meters, our ancestors erected circles of massive stone pillars, each of them up to 6 meters high and 40 tons in weight, decorated with artful pictograms and stone carvings of animals and mythical creatures. We have no idea how they were able to do this. It was probably a project of epic scale for the Stone Age, requiring a level of organization we didn't know early humans were capable of until we found this site. So, why did they build it? The most popular theory is that this was the first temple of humanity, dedicated to long-forgotten gods. We only know that this construction project, the first of its kind, marks the beginning of a new era. It's in this area, around that time, that humans truly began to build their own world, which would make it a fitting milestone in our history for the start of our calendar. This moment in time is so distinct that scientist Cesare Giuliani birds proposed built their that humanity should switch to us. what he called the Holocene calendar by adding 10,000 years to our current Gregorian calendar. We don't need to change our well-established days and months, and religious calendars could stay the same as well. But for all official purposes, our current year would be the year 12,016 of the human era. This would drastically alter how we think about history and how it feels. Let's take a very brief look and move through our new history from our new year zero. 12,000 years ago saw the beginning of the first construction project kicking off our history. It would be in use for about 2,000 years. It took nearly a millennium until Jericho, probably the first city on Earth, was founded in the year 1000 after the start of the human era. Progress was still very, very slow at this point. Over the next thousand years, more and more permanent settlements appeared around the world, and more and more plants and animals were domesticated as agriculture spread. Evidence for trade over thousands of kilometers has been found from this period. Around 5 million humans were alive at this point in history, fewer than live in London today. Technology advanced constantly at a slow pace. Pottery became widespread. The first cultural communities appeared in China, India, and the Fertile Crescent. 
Around the year 4,000, 8,000 years ago from today, humans started to use metal for the first time, learning to mix tin and copper, and kick-starting what we know as the Bronze Age around the year 5,000. The first proto-writing emerged, and the wheel was invented. In South America, the Chinchorro culture started to artificially mummify humans 2,000 years earlier than in ancient Egypt. The first high cultures began emerging around the year 7,000. The Indus Valley Civilization, Ancient Egypt, the Minoans in Greece, and the Sumerians in Mesopotamia. Stonehenge was built in Britain, and the first dynasty in China began. Utzi the Iceman lived around this time. What we consider history now started, and things began picking up pace as the world population rose to over 30 million. A number of new high cultures appeared around the world, many writing down their legends. More and more cities were founded. In South America, the Olmec culture emerged. Around this time, the legendary Siege of Troy is supposed to have happened. Soon after, in the Eastern Mediterranean and the Fertile Crescent, the Bronze Age ended in violence. Every Bronze Age culture, except Egypt, was destroyed by mysterious invaders. Writing and progress froze for hundreds of years. Around the year 9500, what we consider Western culture began. The Greek city-states beat off the Persian invasion and triggered their golden era, ended by Alexander the Great around 9700. 100 years later, Rome destroyed Carthage and became a dominant force in the world. Caesar was murdered in the year 9956, while the world population had risen to about 300 million people. And it's only now, around the year 10,000, that we've reached the point where the Gregorian calendar and our current method of marking human history begins. A mere 2,000 years from now, humans will walk on the moon. If we think about history as we do now, we are underplaying 10,000 years of human progress and development. Including all of it in our calendar makes our past more impressive. It shows how progress became exponential with time, and it incorporates all humans from all cultures into our calendar. A new year zero for our history could reframe how we think of ourselves. As a building project that started 12,000 years ago, when for the first time our ancestors came together to carve a temple out of bedrock with tools made of stone, not knowing what they would set in motion, where it would lead us as a species. From building the first temple to ships flying beyond the sky. We've made a Kurzgesagt version of the human era calendar that you can buy here if you want. It's a calendar for Man, we ain't even a type zero civilization yet. It's for the year 12,017. The year we think we should be in right now. There are only a very limited amount available, but if we sell enough of them, we'll make this a regular thing and maybe produce more print products in the future. The calendar is illustrated and we put in a few fun facts. Also, as always, if you like what we do, please consider supporting us on Patreon or buying things we made. It really helps. Thanks and have a happy 12,017. Oh my god, does that mean it's 12,020? Oof, 2020 has been a bad year. Oh man, I really want to watch another one of these videos, but... <laughs> no. Okay, so this is the image synthesizer. Um, take an image, like this, this, uh, I don't know what you call this, this is like a crow face. This is an actual picture of a crow. Um, it will generate an image that follows the patterns in that image. So you can see here, if you set the quality to perfect, which is zero, uh, it'll basically just copy and tile it exactly. But if you add little bits of error, like 0.2, it'll just start, you'll see it'll start mixing things that are alike together and it actually tiles pretty well. So basically what it does is, is it takes a pattern and it generates a very similar pattern or image from that pattern that fits together. 
Uh, I think an actual really good way of visualizing this is this trellis. It's got very simple like 2D spheres or circles. And if you run this, for example, with pattern size one, uh, it gives you this. Almost looks like vines spreading to the right. If you increase the pattern size to two, you can now see it gets a bit more of, it actually gets these sphere shapes, but you still have a bit of this vine shape. If you go to three, you now have pretty much the sphere pattern, but you've got some errors here where it kind of makes mistakes. So it's it's a very interesting program, I think, an algorithm because it shows how if you have it absolutely perfect like this, it just copies the pattern absolutely perfectly. But if you add a little bit of error, you get this like still tiling pattern, but with little changes throughout it, which I think is really good. So the whole idea is basically just to take an image you already have and generate a texture from it that you can use for graphics in games. And I actually forgot, I should show this on stream. I did a little shader the other day as a test after seeing this DLSS upscaling stuff. Hold on a minute. All right, so seeing um, seeing this stuff on DLSS from NVIDIA and like upscaling, I had seen stuff like this. Actually, I should show this as well. Um, I So this stuff from NVIDIA drives me absolutely crazy. Like all this hype around DLSS and the deep learning super sampling, it drives me fucking crazy because we've had this shit in emulators for years. Um, this is called HQX, high quality scale scale filter. There's like, there's like, I want to say there's an endless number. There's like 20 different algorithms for doing upscaling like this, just like DLSS does. And in my opinion, these work even better. They're super fast. They're super consistent. So you can look here, takes a pixelated image and it'll generate vector art from it. So I, this is this HQX is actually phenomenal because like if you look at these rotated cubes, it like rounds them out perfectly. It's amazing. And like the circular shape here from the smiley face is insanely good. So like we have had this upscaling filter without deep learning or neural networks. And like this is actually designed to work on the CPU so this is interesting eight pixels around the source pixel this gives a total combinations of similar or dissimilar neighbors the arrangement of neighbors is looked up in a predefined table so I think I have this, but it's looking in a two by two area. Or this, mine is only checking for four pixels instead of eight. So I need to, okay. So I've made this, which I believe is a very similar version to it. Uh, this will, let me just show this first. So this is pixel art neon cat. And then on the right here is my upscaling filter. I think it's pretty good. Um, but the thing is, is if you look at the actual HQX here, it actually has, um, so this can only do diagonals. If you see it's either flat 90 degree angle or a 45 diagonal degree angle like this. But in the actual HQX filter, you can see it actually has another angle in between those two angles. And that actually gives this nice roundness effect. So I made this 
just kind of quickly the other night testing the idea, but I'm fairly certain I can make it better or just search a few more pixels and end up getting a better line shape. Shapes are detected by checking for pixels of similar color according to threshold. So that's what I have. Two to the eight combinations of similar or dissimilar neighbors. Source pixel is compared to the color. Wait. Compared to... So this is actually different than how I'm doing it. Um... I wonder if H, I wonder if this actually moves the image a little bit. I'm really curious how comparing the source pixel works with this because you need to like draw the pixels to the side Hmm. Yeah, so anyways, what I'm saying is this algorithm is like simple, but there's so much stuff I could do with this, like, or even improve on it. It's crazy to me, though, because it actually generates anti-aliased lines like this. And this is technically a form of anti-aliasing because you can throw this just at a normal image and it'll take the pixels and generate smaller anti-aliased lines like it's not. It's not the exact same thing as anti-aliasing, but it can be used for it. And this can be used as an outline filter, which is... Oh, there's so many uses to this algorithm. So this was just a small thing. But this is, I feel like, going to open so many doors in terms of effects. Well, I don't know why I just saved that. I didn't edit it. But, like, this stuff is so cool. I feel like people should be way more interested in this stuff when you have like DL like if people are freaking out about DLSS, I don't know how people can't be freaking out about stuff like this. And like I posted this on the Shader Toy Discord and I was like, "Oh, has anyone else I found this HQX shader on Shader Toy and it's not implemented correctly. It's not actually the proper HQX." And I shared this and I was like, "Oh, does anyone else know any high quality scaling filters on Shader Toy, and there's. I couldn't find any at least. I would love to see more of these though. Because, like. It's like. This is such a simple thing that uses such complex stuff. Like, even the stuff of detecting lines, of being. using. the shapes are detected by checking for pixels of similar color according to the threshold. Like, even this, I believe, can be improved by doing, like, a dynamic threshold based off how much surrounding pixels change. Like, there's so many things you could do with this and just work on. Speaking of that, I gotta, I gotta say what I'm gonna do to fix this or what I need to do to polish this up. So, okay, for the synthesization, I need to have this go left to right. Right here, we can see it generates vines that always go to the right. So this, I believe, is because it generates the pixels left to right each time. So I think I need to have it go back and forth, go once to the right, then go right to left, then go left to right again. And I think that should fix it. All right, hold on. I, I'm gonna get more water. Stretch a little bit. I also want to. I want to leave this HQ up screen on because I. I feel like people need to know about this more. This shit's amazing. Up, <laughs> it's upscaling and super sampling without all the slow neural network stuff. It's great.
Hey you, hey Mor Namori, you're back. This is amazing. This is like DLSS, but it doesn't need a slow neural network. Like, have you seen this? Like, this stuff has been out in in emulators for like 10 years. And this is basically DLSS. Like, it's actually crazy. But I don't I, I agree it's not doing like as much extrapolation as a deep learning thing, but I don't like the idea of DLSS basically um like so here's what I like about this. This has a really predictable result. You know it's detecting lines and you know how it's gonna behave from detecting these solid shapes. I really don't like the idea of DLSS potentially adding features, like details, that were never designed to begin with. Like, but, DLS look complex, I read some info about it. Yeah, like, I'm sure it's complex. It uses a neural network to extrapolate what, what pixels are from surrounding pixels, or like filling in pixel samples. Like that's almost what I'd argue I don't like about it is it's so complex you don't know what DLSS is actually applying to the pixels on your screen. Whereas like something like this, I like this is great because you know exactly how it's gonna affect your thing and it's still gonna give you a higher quality upscaled effect. This is a really interesting algorithm too. Um, I've been looking at like the math of this and it's so interesting because I don't know how to explain this, but if you notice the lines here, I really gotta zoom in. So the lines that it fills in from the pixels, they're aliased, or sorry, they're anti-aliased lines. Um, but the lines you see are at fixed angles. Like, I don't know how to show it, but like, they don't have anything here that displays it. But when things don't line up with the exact, with the exact angle, it will like fill it in with similar angles, like dither between them to create the angle between. So it like basically it fills in anti-aliasing for lines that match up perfectly diagonal, which I believe is actually how some FXAA works. Question is if this can exist and can predict good why 2D denoiser does not exist. Yeah, this isn't a denoiser, that's the thing. It close? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could blur the noisy image and then use this to upscale it once you have the pixels that are that are similar enough. I 
I hate the term denoise though, because it makes you think that you're actually getting something that's like the image without noise, like if you had a higher sampling resolution. When it's it's really just filling in filling in gaps. And like I'm not saying this doesn't do that as well. That's exactly what this is doing. It's filling in gaps with lines, but you know exactly what those lines are and how they're doing. I want to figure out how exactly this works though. Color of each eight pixels is around the source pixel as compared shapes are detected by detecting pixels of similar color. It uses the YUV color space to calculate color differences. So differences of brightness is weighted higher to mimic human perception. Possible to use a lookup table. Hmm. So YUV might be I can't remember, what is YUV? Luma component Y, two chrominance values, blue and red. Yeah, I can definitely see how this is really good for compression. What's the, oh, here we go. Yellow equals 0.299 red plus green plus blue. Wow, that's a crazy algorithm. 298 times C, 409 times E. <laughs> Talk about magic numbers. I actually wonder, um, this actually applies to this. I could do YUV comparison here. I don't think it would be worth it though. I've thought about doing um wavelet a wavelet option for this where it doesn't compare colors exactly, it actually compares like the wavelet difference values. Anyways, let's finally try and do some work on this. Um, so the issue right now is these vines that always travel to the right. This is supposed to be random, so these are supposed to sometimes go to the left as well, or at least be even, not always go to the right. I'm fairly certain that this is caused by the scan lines going to the right each time. So what we're going to do is we're going to make them go the other way. We're going to flip them to the left. I don't know what to call that though. Maybe just um, flipped synth deer. If lit synth here drops minus minus else um I 
actually need to check. I need to do a different check depending on if it's flipped. Hmm. This isn't very efficient, but check this equals limits after adding it up then we need to do the flipped synth here here and then depending on if it's flipped actually we don't need to change the image X hmm or do we Okay, we need to actually do minus minus or plus plus depending on if it. So it'll be negative one here and I'll add one to make it go and it'll be one over the limit. So I'll subtract one. Have fun, I have to go. All right, I, this shouldn't be a long stream anyways. So I'll see you around. I was saying before, I find this polishing stuff more boring than the actual, like, I find it more exciting when the algorithm isn't completely working properly, and I'm still trying to figure stuff out. Okay. And then, if it's doing seam passes, I'm going to reset the flipped synth theor. Actually, just any time finishes here, I'm going to reset the flipped synth theor. So hopefully this will work now. I'm not completely certain. I just realized it's not going to work because of the way the shader works. Shit. So... The way this works is it checks. Mm. This checks if it's past the width and height. So the way it works is while well, adding, I have to check if it's bigger or smaller than. I would need to add some custom shader pass just for flipping the lines. Oof. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I might not be able to fix this. Okay, anyways, I did this little code. Let's just see if this does work flipping the line back and forth. Yep, 
it's definitely going back and forth. Hold on, let me load up a big one. Yep, it's going back and forth, but it's breaking. Okay. So I'm just thinking, is there an easy way that I can change this shader to support the back and forth left to right without without completely reprogramming a different shader version? Hmm. Bigger than or equal to, no wait, that's not. Where's the section? Right here. End X. So what is that, half the image height? I'm trying to figure out what this is doing here. If not sim and not pass two, LY is zero, then it does half of the image width. The image width. Or 46. Wait a minute, hold on. Index isn't even used here. Oh, wait, it is right here. Hmm. This is just being used to check if the image is out of bounds. Hmm. This should just be MAX then, I guess. I'm not sure. Bigger than half the width. Why half the width? What if I make this not 0.5? Wait, I wonder if I position is offset.
Yeah, I don't think I need the bigger than X there. Huh, let me test it with the tiling. Okay, it looks like so everything is still good. All right, it's working. Okay, so that didn't work. I'm not gonna be able to fix um, fix the way it goes side to side. That's kind of disappointing, but that's the way it goes. Uh, or that's the thing, I could fix it, but it's an insane amount of work to fix a very tiny thing that's not even really an issue. Like, it's one of those things that's a bug, but also a feature. Like, it doesn't really matter if it goes left to right, and if it actually does go to right every time, that means you can control it, and it also means that you can go, hey, um, I want to, like, if, if you know it goes right each time. Whoa, 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 what just happened there? Why did it generate noisy the first time? That looks broken. That actually looks broken. I wonder, did I break that when I did change to the shader? Or was that always broken? No, I guess that's always broken. That's really interesting. Why does it... Oh, it's the synthesized tiling. It wrapping around. Hold on though, does this, uh, does this actually repeat? Yeah, that's actually a nice tiling image. Um, let me see if removing that had any change at all. That's actually really cool. Just the really simple patterns like this, but they are tiling. Okay, well, that means I can just remove this code. I think I should work on optimizing now. Although I'm not sure, it's like... Let me see how much slower the tiling is because I think the thing I need to optimize is the tiling which checks this stuff each time I this is the main part I think I can optimize is I can take some of these if statements outside of the loop but at the same time I don't think it'll have that much benefit because pixels are still batched together
Let's see about optimizing it though. Um, so we just need to check X right here. We can actually check because the source position dot Y isn't going to get offset. It's just going across the Y. Same with the image position. So let's actually see about optimizing this now. I'm gonna use a big image like this to check. Okay, so to actually check the performance, I should add a timer here. And it's also pretty consistent. So I think I'm gonna look at adding like an estimated time to finish. I just wanna see if I can notice it being any slower when it's tiling. Yeah, it looks a little bit slower actually when it's tiling. All right, hold on. I will be right back. I'm going to put some music on. Just so there's something going while I'm away. That's some nice clean drums. Maybe I'll generate a nice big image while, while we're here. Okay, there we go.
to me like I broke something. Huh. It looks like I broke something. Hmm. I guess that's the way uh, the way it's actually supposed to be because it detects the edges as tiling. All right, let me uh, calculate the time to do the processing. Whenever it starts generating here, I'm going to record the start time. And then... I guess I'm going to calculate the estimated time multiple times. I think I need this because I need this to calculate how much time is left. Percent complete left. I should put this on multiple lines. Estimated time left. How do I encode time in JavaScript again? You know what? This kind of looks wrong as well. Maybe I did break something. Yeah, I think I did break something. Hmm. It's really hard to tell with this. Because it does actually by its nature put in blocks. No, yeah, it looks it looks like it's splitting things into blocks. Hold on. I might have a bug. And I am dropping frames, huh? All right, I'm going to try undoing this. Let me see if this fixes it. It looks like it did fix it. Yeah, so I'm going to keep doing it. It doesn't seem to be generating any more blocks. It definitely looks like that. I actually did bug it out. Um, it 
if not sim and not pass to if it's tiling but it's not sim and it's not pass to why would it need to limit it I think this is wrong. I think this is supposed to be supposed to be zero. X smaller than end x. I think I have a bug in my code here. I don't think I fully wrote this. I think I actually still have some bug fixing to do in the algorithm. Hmm. So let's start with this non-tiling first. This is correct. It either goes to max x or zero. But the issue is, I believe here, it's using this and checking bigger than end x, which is now an actual value not hmm hmm See, this doesn't make sense because if it's tiling Oh my god, it's tiling. It'll never actually run with this. Wait a minute. So that code didn't affect this generation at all. Or did it? If image tiling, so it shouldn't be running this. Yeah, so that that didn't have any effect. Hmm. Hmm. So I gotta think what this is trying to do. I feel like this is trying to go to the current pixel image search x, so I'm going to set it to that. So this way it's bigger than the search pixel. I think that should work. Let's see how that changes it. I want to check with the trellis pattern actually, because we ran that just before with the tiling. Interesting. Okay, it actually generates a different pattern on this first time now. That's good. It's very nice. I think that's actually better. All right, hold on, I'll be right back.
actually, I'm wondering. I think instead of updating this each time here. I'm gonna go right here so each time it calls the generation loop. Or actually, maybe each time it finishes. Ah, whatever. actually different. Ah, this isn't... Yeah, so I actually need to calculate a different progress value for each mode, because they have different amounts of work to be done. There we go. So I'll me measure the progress for similarity generation as well, where there's multiple images. Now we just need the estimated time left. Mm. So this is progress over 100. Hmm. So we need to do the amount of progress left, 100 minus prog, times how long is it taken to generate the current progress? Or times the seconds per, ser per percent? That's actually what I mainly need to calculate first. So start time minus last time out. Let me actually calculate this itself. So this is the time passed divide that by the progress to get the number of progress per second. Times 100 minus prog. So this should give the milliseconds left. Um, let me just check something. I need to convert the date. I can't remember exactly how to do this. up how to do this. Yeah, how do I do formatting? What is what is the for there's so many formatting functions for JavaScript. Uh
Wait, how do I do... How do I do it with formatting? Do I have to do the formatting myself? That's not what I want either. Oh my god, everyone's... Wait, hold on, what is this? INTL? I've never seen this before. INTL object is the namespace of BMC script internalization API, which provides the likely sensitive string comparison number formatting, time formatting. Wow. Okay. I guess I'm just going to be getting the hours and minutes in that then. Far format it myself. I swear to god there should be formatting in JavaScript. I guess I have to do the formatting myself. Yep, okay. Let's try this. Day is three? What is. Does new date not take a UTC string? Value and integer value represent the number of milliseconds. Get, get UTC day. Wait, what? This doesn't make sense. There's a number of milliseconds since UTC with leap seconds ignored. What? Okay, well at least this is correct. I don't know why the UTC day is 4. When it starts on January 1st, that doesn't... doesn't make sense. Day of the week. Oh, okay. Date. Day of the month. Oh, I'm looking for date instead of day. Between 1 and 31. Okay. There we go. That was what I'm looking for. Yeah, what's a. Man, there should be an easier way to format this. Let me look.
Oof, yeah, all of the solutions are just doing it itself. I'm, I'm really surprised about that. I thought JavaScript of all languages would have something for that. Okay, that should give us now estimated time left. At the end I'm going to print out actual the amount of time it took to process. Okay, that was weird. Looks like it said 23 hours. Uh, that's weird. D.get. Hmm. Why is ours 23? Oh, it's start time minus last time. It's supposed to be last time on minus start time. Oh yeah, and here, if it's tiling, we need to do the number of passes. So, I'm actually going to need two variables, nc passes, it's going to store the total number from the beginning. Where do we read that value? Right here. And scene passes equals. So that, that'll let us calculate the total progress.
it's the same. I actually think it's just like this. Except instead of divide by style images, I divide by the end scene passes. So I need to not... I actually... I need to do this the opposite way I was doing it before. Set image scene passes to zero. It's kind of confusing how I read into the one variable and then copy it over, but... Too lazy to refactor that. And it works fine. It's the same optimization. So... Then what do I need to do here? When it does image scene passes, I need to check if image scene passes is smaller than end scene passes. Then if it is, we do image scene passes plus plus. Okay. There we go. Set estimated time left nothing. Oh, a second. <laughs> okay. That's actually really good. So, at the least, I gotta have it output seconds, because... Otherwise, it won't output anything. Let's see if this is correct. Ten seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, eat. Okay. Looks like it's an accurate prediction of how much time it takes. Yeah, so I'm thinking right here, should I output the total time to generate? I think I should. I'm just thinking, where would I output it? Probably, uh, okay, actually I can do this easily, right here. ER generated in, okay. I'm gonna create my own date time formatting so that I don't need to do the same thing every single time. string. Oh, I just... I just deleted part of the code I needed. Down here, when it's finished, we'll output completed in date dot now minus start time. Boom. So this will be good because now I can actually test the performance. 
So I think this takes 20 seconds to generate. That's how long this is. Actually, maybe 16 seconds from what I saw. Completed in 14 seconds. That was actually pretty quick. So let's see how much slower it makes it doing a pattern size of 10. Uh, looks like it's like cutting off sections now. 16 seconds, so it didn't even make it didn't even make it that much slower. Now let's try it with synthesized and source tiling. See how much slower that makes it because now it if the if statements that I'm looking at optimizing are actually that much slower, then this should be a lot slower. Oh, I forgot it's doing the second pass. So that was actually incorrect. I didn't calculate the seam passes correctly here. Generated in 18 seconds. That's not that much slower. Okay. Let's just try taking those off just to test again. It actually does look a bit faster here. Might be worth optimizing. Sixteen seconds. No, it's it's actually really good. That's actually all good uh, optimiz optimization wise. I'm just curious, it went, the time left went up to like 23 hours at one point. I wonder if that's because it went negative or what was happening there. Alright, let's see if the tiling works properly. Completed in zero seconds. Oops. So the progress is correct this time. Yeah, that's actually working. Okay, sweet. So this is so nice, how it's actually refining the repeating value right here. I'm gonna open this up and look at paint because this should be... Okay, that's broken. Whatever it's doing here, I gotta figure out how to fix that. That looks like it's actually learning to repeat JPEG patterns from the image. Alright, let me think about what it's doing here. Image scene passes. Divided by end scene passes. Plus this this is weird because it should never be this should never be negative I 
I mean, actually, it makes sense if this goes past 100. But why did this go past 100? go past 100. Let's try looking at this again, but with one. Okay, so the second one actually counts as past 100% for whatever reason. Let's see, hold on. End scene passes is one. Image scene passes is one. I just realized I should set end seam passes to zero whenever it's not being run just so that this isn't isn't counted when it when it's not being used. Minus start time divided by progress. That's all good. That it's right here. Something about this. Why could image scene passes be one and it's not done yet? Oh my god, I'm dumb. I just gotta do plus one here. pattern. Sweet. Okay. Oh! That's weird. It looks like it just cut off in the middle. Hold on. Hold on. That looked like it just cut off in the middle of rendering. Yeah, right here. Looks like it just cut off right there. Goes down. One, two, three, four. Okay, I guess that was just like a rare, rare occurrence. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, this is confusing. I just realized I'm gonna change this to one as default instead of zero. Actually, the default is one. Never mind. But how I did, how I added plus one here. It's weird the way I'm computing this. So this is gonna be max one. Actually, I should start image passes at one then. Yeah, that will do it nicely. Okay, that's weird. It just started at 100%. That's broken. So now I need to do minus one here. Hmm. 
Oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. It did one too many. So this should just do one right here. No, but it's doing two. Okay, that is broken. If smaller than... Yeah, so I was actually right before. There we go. Perfect. Completed in five seconds. Do two tiling passes. Should fix this. these inconsistencies up a little bit. Completed in nine seconds. Does it tile? It doesn't tile. Well, that kind of makes sense. It's a hard pattern to tile. This should be pretty much a noise pattern, but it should tile. Yep. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, this is a hard image for it to figure out how to tile. Maybe I gotta run like six passes over it. It's weird to me how it calculates this flat line on the edge. I feel like that's wrong. Let me go and look back at my um, this reference image. Yeah, that still looks like it's working fine. I guess it's just a really hard one for it to, to tile. No, that's that's working fine. And like source tiling, yep, yeah, changes it. Okay. It's looking really good. Uh, I think I'm going to end the stream here. Uh, I have a bit more work to do. I think I'll finish that up tonight. So the stream will be back up in like an hour. I'll see you around. The nature camera will be up here. So if you want to watch this big ass gang of sparrows, uh, they're very cute and fluffy little round balls. Uh, enjoy. See you around. Have a good day. Good evening. I man, I am kind of tired after playing Spellbreak all day. The people were saying VR games are for if you want to rest your mind. I do not think that's true at all. At all. All right. Bye bye. See you around. Thank you for watching.